Hello, I am back, 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 back again. We're going to be talking about some more Dragula Titans today. This is episode two that we are going to be discussing. Damn, this is a good episode. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. My eyebrow pot is running low. I have backups. Don't say a word. Also, I don't know what's happening here. I'm about to bobby pin this bitch. You know what? Two hours later. You know, there's a reason why Azula went crazy and cut off all her hair, and it's because of that. Insubordinate pieces of hair. So let's talk about the second elephant in the room. Abora came back. Leave it to the boules to uh, twist our titties like that. The way I thought, it'd be such a gag if nobody went home first episode, and then they brought Abora back. And the funniest thing was them all talking about Abora and having this long conversation, then her just kind of wandering in, hmm, what y'all talking about in here? Now, I guess the question is, do we believe that Abora should be back. Yes, I think any opportunity for a drag monster to continue to show their art is important. And like I said last week, I think Abora is really bombastic. I think she's got a really unique, interesting look at drag and, and especially Dragula. And I'm excited to see her a little bit longer than what we've gotten. So the fright feat this week is to eat some spicy peppers. Any opportunity to get someone to eat hot food and see how their reaction is, is great. Didn't care for the vomiting, Erica is out for blood, which honestly, I don't blame her. I think Erica feels really underestimated and Erica is fierce and I have always thought this. I think a lot of people don't think her drag is Dragula, but she is Dragula. She's got all the elements that there are for a Dragula performer and Erica needed to prove that this week. She wins the fright feat and she chooses a Bora as the one to get the baldness curse. As everybody in the room said, this was a really bad decision. If you're thinking strategy, you are gonna want to target Eva or Victoria, or even Hoso. Those are the clear top three in the competition. Because Abora went home the previous week, it's sort of just like, all right, I'm gonna send you back home. You don't deserve to be here. That's kind of what the message was. But like, I don't know. It was a really safe choice to not rock any boats. The main presentation challenge is a riff off of the very first Dragula episode to bring a witch back. When they said that this was gonna be a revenge of the witch, oh, I was so excited. I loved that first episode. I remember watching it on YouTube and I remember falling in love with Dracula. And I love that the Boulets are not afraid to reference themselves. Or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it. So all the monsters have to create a witch look and they have to design a shoe that corresponds with the look. And on top of it, they also have to do a lip sync. Now, I'm sitting here thinking, ooh, this is gonna be like a really cool, spooky witch number. It was the silliest thing I had ever seen in the dissonance of these filthy, horrifying witches singing. Let's get some shit. This is the Dragula that I'm here for. Swan and Drac are so camp, they understand the essence of drag is camp and I love it. So here is my breakdown of the looks. And this is again, my personal preference. So number 10 is Yovska, nine being Kendra. And for Yovska and Kendra, I, it just didn't give me witch, which is why I put them down here. Next is Melissa. Maybe I shouldn't say this. I think that prosthetic belongs to someone in the IE, or at least the mold for it does. I think I know the queen that it belongs to. Anyway, next is Coco. And the only reason why Coco is here is because it was white again, and I wish that it was a different color. Next is Erica. I loved the candy inspired witch. I think the idea of like a Hansel Gretel situation was really fun. And I think that translated to me. That made sense in my brain. Next is Abora. Those spirals, chef's kiss. Fine. Next is Hoso, and I agree with the judges. If you took the hat off, I don't know if it would give me witch, but it was still so sickening. Next is Astrid, Eva. Oh, <gasps> sheesh! Can we talk about Eva's makeup? I stand Eva Destruction so hard this season. I'm freaking obsessed. And my top look this week was Victoria. It looked a little bit familiar to maybe something that she did in Resurrection, but it's so good. It was giving me Hag Raven from Skyrim and I loved that. Now let's move on to the performance section of this runway, which was to perform shoes. So camp, so funny, not what I was expecting at all, but so perfectly in line with what I wanted. The top performance of the night was Eva. Taking that broom and using it as a lip sync prop was next level performance. It's 
similar to the laugh track that Eva did that got her famous in the first place. That cackling one, her just saying, these shoes are good, these shoes are bad, and swinging it as if she's this witch in her home, cleaning up, getting the dust out, getting ready for the next incantation, and just sort of having this disassociating moment where she's imagining that she's this glamorous woman <laughs> living with all these shoes. It was so good and God, Eva, Eva did it for me. So Jovska and Kendra are the bottom two this week and I completely agreed with the Boulay's critiques. I agreed with the placements of everybody. I understand why they put Melissa in the bottom just so that they could give her critiques and let her know like, hey, you did a good job, but don't feel like you have to change your entire aesthetic just to fit into Dragula because they brought her there for a reason. It's the same with Erica. She was brought there to show her drag. And I think that the Boulets need to remind each one of the contestants, don't deviate too far from what you're good at. This is not drag race where you come into All Stars and they want you to give you, but also give everything else. This is Dragula Titans where the judging is fair. The production is not rigging it for one person to win or to do well. The way that you progress is by doing the best you that you can. And I think it was good to remind Melissa of that. That being said, I fully understand why Kendra was in the bottom. Am I sad about it? Yes, because Kendra is my sister, but I understand. It's hard when you're in a season of people that are just so good. If you are not cranking up the volume as loud as you can, you are going to get washed out. And I think, unfortunately, that's what happened. It's just everybody else was just a little bit louder than Kendra in the performance. Plus the shoes. God, those poor shoes. I love my sister, but those shoes were not it, ma'am. And in the end, Jovska is eliminated. This is actually the person who I thought was gonna be eliminated first in the competition. And I was pretty surprised that it was a Bora. If you watched it, what did you think of this episode? I'm so excited for the next one. Do you agree with the bottom? Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Goodbye. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye.